Recently, I made this, a pickler triangle for my daughter. A pickler triangle is a climbing toy for children that helps them develop motor skills. The simple, open-ended nature of it also encourages creative thinking and provides children with endless hours of play. It can be used by children as young as six months old. Younger children can use it to help them pull to a stand, while older children can enjoy climbing over it or crawling under it. You can extend its use by adding a ramp or a slide to one of the top rungs, or just throw a blanket over it and call it a tent. My version of the Pickler Triangle is a very minimal, affordable design that can be made from ordinary materials available at any hardware store, and it requires few special tools. There are no ugly screws, knobs, or bolts, and it's also collapsible, so it can be transported easily without taking up much space. To show you how I made this Pickler Triangle, I'm going to step you through a SketchUp file that I've made. I don't have any footage of me making it, but I'm going to step you through this SketchUp file which has all the different pieces, parts, components, and all the steps very clearly laid out. If you'd like to download this SketchUp uh, file or some printed written up instructions, uh, those are available. I'll have uh, something in the description to tell you where you can get those. The materials are really simple. The tools you need are also really, really simple. In fact, you don't need anything fancy or expensive. You just need uh, a basic jigsaw or a bandsaw and you need a drill. If you have uh, extra tools like a drill press or a router or a miter saw, or a table saw, you can use those, but essentially all you need is a jigsaw to make some curved cuts, and um, you need a drill to drill uh, one inch holes. So you'll also need a one inch Forstner bit. So let me zoom out and show you the different steps involved here. First of all, materials. What you need first is dowels and one by fours. You'll need 13 one inch dowels. These are normally uh, four feet long if you pull them right off the shelf, but sometimes you can find them in three foot lengths. You only need them to be about three feet long, so if you can find them shorter than four feet, you might save yourself a little bit of money, but they're about four or five dollars a piece. And you'll need some one by four, four foot long boards. I recommend you get poplar for both of these. I would not recommend using pine. Pine's not going to hold up as well. It's not going to cut as well. And I think poplar looks really nice, and it's really not much more expensive than getting a pine board. So these boards measure three and a half inches across by uh, three quarters of an inch thick, and you need them to be four foot long. Now, there's going to be a bit of scrap left over on the dowels, but for the one by fours, there will be very little scrap left over. We're going to be uh, using almost every inch of this board. So we'll need to be careful as we uh, make our cuts, but not a whole lot of waste here. Altogether, these materials will cost you about $75. And that's pretty good for a pickler triangle, which you can buy on Etsy for like $300. This is a pretty good deal if you want to make it yourself. Okay, step one. First, we need to cut down our one by four boards, and we're going to do that um, with the following measurements. You're going to take each of your four foot long boards and make two cuts, one at three feet one inches or 37 inches and one at seven inches beyond that. So you'll end up with three pieces for each one of your one by fours at 37 inches, seven inches and about four inches. Next we're going to glue them together like so. You're going to take the seven inch board and you're going to glue it flush to the top of the 37 inch board. And you're going to take your four inch board and you're going to offset it from the seven inch board by about two and a half inches and glue these together. So just add a little bit of wood glue on these edges and then apply some clamps, preferably to the top and the bottom, let them dry, clean up any glue, squeeze out, and hopefully you get a nice tight joint there. Don't do anything else with these boards for about an hour at least, or better yet, um, glue them up and then wait overnight and then the next day you can uh, take them out of the clamps and proceed. So now, now that we've got all four of our legs like this, we're going to start making marks to trace the outside of the legs and I'll show you how I made those measurements. So I would begin by taking a pencil and scoring a line all the way down the center of the 37 inch board segment at one and three quarters 
uh, from the edge, so that's the center of the board. Then we'll start by measuring one and three quarters inch from the top and draw a circle that is the uh, diameter of the board, so a three and a half inch circle. And then we'll go all the way down the board marking every five inches. Just make a little mark, um, use a nail, maybe put a little hole in the board where that mark is every five inches. That's where we're going to put our holes. And at the bottom of the board, of course, putting another circle at the bottom. Now we're going to measure five inches from the top hole at a 60 degree angle and draw the same you know, three and a half inch circle there. And this point should be equidistant from the top two points. They should both be five inches away at a 60 degree angle. We'll see how it works there. So if we want to create a rounded profile on that V that we've just created, I'm going to make another mark that's five inches from the top point, but this time at a 30 degree angle. And so I'm measuring down about five inches, then just create a curve or a circle that touches both sides of the V right there. And that'll give you the complete shape that you need to cut out with the bandsaw. And once we've cut it out, it'll look a little bit like this. And here's the finished shape of our legs. Once we finish cutting that out, you should end up with uh, one of these legs like this. And we'll do this four times. We'll repeat it for all four legs. Uh, these two will be the outer legs. They require no additional modifications. But for the inside legs, we need to create this shape right here. And in order to do that, we're going to make a few measurements and cuts here. Let me show you. So I'll start at this point here, which is five inches away from the top two holes at a 60 degree angle. You see the perfect triangle there. And we're just going to use our Forstner bit to drill a one inch hole straight through the board. When I do it in SketchUp, you can see it looks like this. This hole has gone completely through the board. And now we just need to draw a gentle curve coming away from that hole to cut out with the jigsaw. The exact shape of this curve is not really that important. You just don't want that curve to extend too far or you'll see later when you go to open the triangle it won't open all the way. So we're going to create just a really shallow curve and feel free to do this on one leg and then trace it on top of the other leg. Once you cut it away you'll be left with a shape that looks somewhat like this. And now that we've got all of our legs completely cut out it's time for the fun part, drilling all the holes. Now with the Inside faces of the boards facing up, let's go ahead and make marks for where all of our holes should be if we don't already have them made at this point. I'm showing you again in the SketchUp file where I mark the holes. Uh, all the rungs again will be five inches apart on center. Make sure you're drilling your holes at a consistent depth. If you have a drill press, that's really handy because then you can set a drill, uh, a depth stop rather so that you make sure all of your holes are exactly the right uh, depth. If not, if you're using a hand drill, just put a piece of tape or some other mark on your drill bit about a half inch up so you don't drill all the way through the board and you always stop at approximately the same point. As you can see me marking the spots where these holes will be drilled, take note that the outer legs will not have a hole drilled at the very top mark of the board. And, but they will have a recessed hole at every other point. The inner legs, which you see on the left, will have recessed holes at all these points, but they will also have a through hole at the next to top mark. This is where a dowel will go through the inner legs and connect to the outer legs, and it is at this point that the whole triangle will pivot to uh, allow it to collapse so you can transport it easily. Once you've got all these holes drilled and everything is ready to go, now's a good time to give the legs a good sanding all over, but I would recommend that you don't sand inside the holes because we want the dowels to have a really, really tight fit, so you don't want to sand away too much material inside the holes. But otherwise, go ahead and sand everything, and if you have a router, uh, feel free to add a eighth inch or a quarter inch round over to all the sides of the legs to give them a nice smooth finish or you can knock off the hard edges with some rough grit sandpaper and a little bit of old-fashioned elbow grease. Okay so now we've got our legs all finished it's time to turn our attention to the dowels and from here on out it's going to go pretty quickly. So here's our legs now let's cut some dowels for the inner leg assembly. We're going to need six dowels for the inner legs 
and cut them to whatever length you want. I recommend about 30 inches, maybe no longer than that, but I think 30 inches long is a good width for these rungs. So if possible, set up a stop on a miter saw or table saw so you can get these all to exactly the same length or as close as possible. And once you've done that, it's time to do a dry fit. And here's where it gets exciting because everything starts to look and feel like a real uh, object. So again, this second hole from the top here on the inner legs is a through hole, so it won't get a dowel, but everything else will get a dowel. So go ahead and dry fit a dowel in each of those recessed holes and make sure it all fits nice and snug and everything looks good. If you're happy with that, now it's time to turn our attention to the outer leg assembly. So we've got to start by getting a measurement for the width or the length of the outer leg dowels. And to do that, we're just gonna use a tape measure and measure from the outside of one of the inner legs to the outside of the other and you know, in this example, in this perfect world example, it ends up being two foot six and a half inches or 30 and a half inches. And to that length, we will add an extra half inch on each side for the uh, depth of the recessed holes, however deep you made those holes. So in this perfect world example, it's gonna end up being about 31 and a half inches. But do err on the side of a little bit longer you might want to try making it a little bit longer and then do a dry fit. You can always take more off the dowels, but you obviously can't add any more back on. So now that we've got that approximate measurement of say 31 and a half inches, we can cut down the rest of our dowels to that approximate length and there should be about seven uh, dowels remaining. So we're going to cut them all to that length. And now we can do a dry fit of the whole thing and it should look something like this. Once we've put everything together, and you'll figure out how to assemble it, there's one right way to do it, you get this. And if you've done it all right to this point, it should open up to a perfect 60 degree angle. This is a perfect triangle, and all the pieces should meet up and match like this. It's very satisfying once you get this whole thing uh, put together like this. So just take a moment and uh, photograph your progress and take some pride in what you've accomplished to this point. So remember that curve we drew on the inner legs, which are going to end up biting this dowel on the outer legs, essentially. This is one thing you want to check at this point to make sure that it really fits snugly and you can actually open the whole thing all the way. If you've made this curve too deep or too shallow or something like that, it won't allow you to get all the way around the dowel. So in a perfect world, it should look a little bit like this. And you should see it kind of lock into place and hopefully that uh, curve on your inner leg doesn't run into uh, the dowel on the outer legs. If it does, no problem, that happened to me, but you can just sand down that kind of bottom lip of your leg until uh, it's just the right size and you can open it all the way. So check that everything fits well, that this pivot point here uh, moves smoothly, that the inner legs can open all the way onto that dowel on the outer legs. And if everything else looks good, then you're ready to disassemble and glue up. So it's time to start by just disassembling everything. And at this point, if you want to add finish to the legs, go ahead and add a few coats of polyurethane with a light sanding in between. Don't polyurethane the dowels and don't get any polyurethane inside the recessed holes. Just like we didn't want to sand inside those holes, I wouldn't want to add finish in there. I'd be worried that you wouldn't get a good fit with your dowels once you go to add them back in. But after everything's dry and everything's finished, just the legs again, then uh, we can start to assemble everything, the legs and the dowels again. Start with the inner leg assembly and get all those six dowels and the legs glued together. And then you can move on to the outer leg assembly and sort of attach that around the inner legs. You'll see how it goes and get everything nice and snug. And uh, once it's all assembled like this, now you can add some polyurethane to the dowels, maybe just use a, a rag and wipe on a few coats, maybe use some wipe on poly, something like that. 
And uh, as a pro tip, I get an extra set of hands to help you when you're assembling this whole thing. The glue could dry pretty quickly and it can be frustrating to try to line up all these dowels and get them in all six or seven holes at the same time. So having an extra set of hands to help you do that uh, goes a long way. And with that, we are essentially done, but there's one final step to make for safety. The last step for safety is to add a hole for a locking pin to prevent the whole triangle from collapsing on itself. Now, this particular triangle is very sturdy if it is made well, and it should never be able to open wider than 60 degrees like this because of the catch on the inside of the legs. But if a larger child or an older child stands on it and leans in or rocks back and forth, it is possible that if it's not on a good ground uh, that it could collapse inward on itself. So to prevent that, we're going to make a quick adjustment to this to uh, prevent it from doing that. So using our Forstner bit again, once it's all assembled, to make sure that these holes line up, we're going to drill a hole straight through the legs where they meet up here. And we can use one of our scrap pieces of dowel as the locking pin. And you can just, you know, slide this into the hole and you'll be all set. This hole will be drilled right in the middle of these top three holes, as you can see here. If you want a measurement, it'd just be two and a half inches on center from the top dowel to the center of this point here. And uh, the reason why we've waited until this point to put this hole in here is to make sure that, you know, with real world tolerances, uh, we want to make sure that these legs line up exactly and these holes line up exactly. So there you have it. You could use a piece of string or rope to tie this off, drill a hole through it, put a string through it, tie it to the leg so you never lose it and it's always there and it's always handy so you never lose it. And uh, then all you got to do to uh, make it uh, sturdy is just to open it up and then slide that dowel in there and feel free to sand the inside of this hole and the dowel itself just to make it really smooth and very easy to pull in and out. It should be enough to keep it from collapsing and it should be enough to prevent a small child from easily pulling it in or out. So there you have it. That's the completed particular triangle. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you'd like to download this SketchUp file and some written instructions, please click the link in the description. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Thanks again for watching.